Hi, good morning, it's Mark Dorsey here once again. In this short video vlog, I want to talk to you about something called your reticular activating system. Now you may or may not have heard of this beast, but it sits in your brain, roughly about here at the top of your brain stem, near a piece of the brain called the amygdala, because it's part of our primitive brain. Now this piece of equipment is really, really important because it correlates with your self-image. So in other words, it correlates with the way that you perceive yourself to be. Now, your self-image is made up of beliefs. That's all it's made up of. So the person you think you are is nothing more than a set of beliefs that have been proved by a set of circumstances that actually sit comfortably with those beliefs. And your reticular activating system is designed to look for information to support those beliefs, thus to support your self-image. So let me give you an example. If you're the kind of person that says, I'm not very good at maths, then your reticular activation system out of all the information that's available to you, we'll look for information to support the fact that you're not very good at maths. If you're the kind of person that says, well, you know, I, I can't lose weight, then your reticular activation system, out of all the information that's available to you, will look for information to support the fact that you can't lose weight. Now, as many of you will know, particularly those of you that train with me on a regular basis, you'll know that our mind is dealing with approximately 400 billion bits of information per second. And, you know, that's a lot of information. And this reticular activating system acts as a filter to allow us to only use the information that actually fulfills a need for us. And that need is met by your self-belief. Now, this is one of the reasons why positive thinking doesn't work. Now, I'm an advocate of positive thinking, as you know, but positive thinking must sit with your self-belief. So if you have a self-belief that says, well, I'm the sort of person that will never make any money, or I'm the sort of person that will never be loved, but you go through a process of saying, well, I'm gonna be rich, I'm gonna make money, I'm gonna be loved, etc." your self-belief will counteract the, the positive intention because you don't really believe that you're entitled to it. And this is a really important factor. Now, can you change your self-belief? Absolutely, you can change your self-belief. And the reason you can do that is because your self-belief belief is based on nothing more than what you believe to be true. So you really have to start from a position of belief. You really have to believe that you are that person. You really have to believe that you're entitled to this thing. Now let me give you some other examples of this reticular activating system. For those of you who are married, particularly the men, you'll know that your wife, your, your mother of your children, will know where your children are, what kind of mood they're in, and whether they're upset or happy or whether they're, they're, they're ill. That's part of the reticular activation system. And if you ever sat down at night, and we've done this when our children were little, and you're watching telly and there's phone calls happening, or you're doing some work, you're having a conversation, and all of a sudden, one of you will go, it's very quiet can't hear the kids. You hone in on the things that are important to you. That's an example of your reticular activation system. When you're driving a car, your reticular activation system is in operation because you have to make minor adjustments. You'd never drive in a straight line. You're always correcting uh, an, an overcorrection. So you might want to turn left, then you have to turn right to turn left uh, to correct that, that left turn and so on and so forth. And your reticular activation keeps you on course. Now, as Maxwell Maltz wrote about in his book, uh, cyber, uh, psycho, yeah, psycho cybernetics, sorry, yeah, psycho cybernetics. He actually wrote about an example in here of your reticular activation system being like a guided missile, or your self image, if you like, your thought process being like a guided missile. So, if you can imagine someone releasing a missile to, to actually hit its target, that missile needs feedback, positive and negative feedback, to actually get to its location. And modern technology today, in many, many missiles, it has advanced this to the nth degree. So it will lock on the target, it will move towards the target due to various things like wind factor, gravitation, movement of target, and so, so, many, other demographic, so many other things out there. It will go off course. So it self-corrects and it self-corrects and it self-corrects. Now, if you think about your self-belief system and your reticular activation system being like that guided missile, then that's exactly how it works because it will hone in on whatever you believe to be true about you. So if you say, well, I'm not the kind of person that's going to be successful, it will go, great, let me find some information to support that for you. If you say, well, I'm the kind of person that's never going to make any money, or whatever I do fails, or I'm useless at this, or I'm no good at that, this thing will say, great, I'll give you the information to support that, because there's 400 billion bits of information coming at you every second, and your brain needs to filter down only that information, which is of value to you. And remember, your brain, your unconscious mind doesn't discriminate. It doesn't understand whether this is good or bad for you. It's just looking for information to support your self-belief and your self-image. And as I said, your self-image is made up from your self-belief. So if you really want to change your life, you've got to change your self-belief. And why shouldn't you? 
why shouldn't you just be the person you want to be? You did it when you were little. When you played games, you became the character in that game. I mean, you know, I, I'm in my 50s now. When, when I grew up, we played cowboys and Indians and soldiers. And we, we became that person. And, you know, and that's who we wanted to be. But then we start to adopt certain beliefs which form our characteristics based on sometimes what other people tell us. So they'll say, well, you know, you're never going to be a straight A student, so why don't you just, you know, accept for less and, you know, maybe go and get a job doing this. And we go, well, yeah, maybe they're right because I'm not very good at this. And then you start to accept these beliefs and you compound these beliefs and then, God heavens, you know, you find things that actually support those beliefs because you start to become not very good at it. Now, the reason I'm doing this video is I, all the time I come across people who say to me, do you know what, I've got a useless memory. And I'll say, yeah, absolutely, I'm sure you have. Just keep telling yourself like that and it will get worse. And they look at me in, in disbelief and say, well, what are you talking about? The other day I was talking to someone and they said, well, you know, I, I, just, I just can't make any money. You know, it's, it's probably me. I've never been very good at business and, you know, I keep trying, but it, it's just not happening. What do I need to do? And I said, well, keep on talking the way you're talking and you'll absolutely not make any money and you'll be absolutely not very good at business because you're absolutely right in self-perpetuating this self-belief you've got going on. So the key to this is to change that. And, and, and there's two tools you can do to, to actually help you do this. In fact, it'll help you do it straight away. One is visualization. The large percent of our brain is given to visualization. And we have more light generators at the other end of the optic nerve than we do light receptors on our eyes. They're, they're there for a reason. They're there so we can actually visualize, so we can actually create stuff with our imagination. And the other thing you can do is start to use affirmations and talk to yourself in a constructive way. Use these believe in yourself say to yourself i am rich i am successful i am the person i want to be i am great in my relationship i love my wife i love my partner i have a successful business do this stuff now i know what some of you'll say because someone said it to me before yeah 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 that's just delusion well it's delusion if you generally don't believe you're entitled to that belief then it's a delusion for you because if you hold the self-belief deep enough that you're not worthy to be that which you can be then of course it's delusion, but delusion is just a way of blaming yourself for not having the actual capacity to believe that you're capable of being better than what you are. Now that might sound a bit harsh, but it's absolutely true. Now, you know, this has been known for centuries. It, it's never, never changed. I mean, you know, I have this book on, on my bookshelf. I read it regularly. In fact, when, when uh, I got the books from the other guys this week, I actually picked this one back up because it's referenced in there and I started to read it again. Uh, hence why I'm doing this video for you because I think this can make a difference in your life. Did it for me, absolutely did it for me. I, I was skint broke, about to lose my house, 80,000 pounds in debt. Uh, I had nothing to lose and nothing to bargain with. So I started to do this stuff. I started to recite affirmations. I started to write down the things I wanted. I started to visualize and things changed. Uh, and that's not um, an arrogant boast. It's not in any way trying to impress you, but I'm trying to impress upon you that you can do this too. Anyone can do this. Do you know, if you can worry about something, you already have the mechanism in your brain to actually create what you want. Because worry is the same mechanism. It goes into the future and makes you worry about something which hasn't happened yet. And then you get the emotions and the feeling and everything else that goes with it. So why not use that, that infrastructure and go into the future and create something that you want to be now and see how good that feels. And then amplify that and, and keep repeating that and rinse and repeat often and often. And if you do this, you genuinely will be successful. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope that makes a difference to your day.